Hey everyone, it's Will Coleman here and welcome to Will's Big Kitchen. On today's episode, I am hosting an Italian dinner party that serves four people and guess what? It's a three course meal. Now what if I told you that this whole meal is under 30 bucks? Now would you believe me? Well guess what? I want to prove it to you on today's episode. Now, this is an Italian dinner party, so I'm gonna start off with making my homemade meatballs. And that starts off with a half an onion. I'm gonna just chop that up, take off the ends, of course, and I'm gonna take all the extra skin off because you don't want that in your meatballs, now do you? You wanna just get those little chopped. You don't want them too thick either because you don't want your guests just biting on a big onion, now do you? And we just put it in your bowl like that. Just some slices. Not too big, remember. So I'm cutting them very, very, very thin. Because it's great like that with the meatballs. All right, last slice. And these onions give the meatballs a great flavor and a great texture. Give that one final chop. Now, I'm gonna put it in my bowl. Get you a nice big bowl. It doesn't have to be glass whatsoever. I'm just using glass so you guys can see it through the camera. But get you a nice bowl so you can mix the meatballs evenly. That's enough onion. Now it's time for the chopped garlic. I have two garlic cloves here that I'm gonna just smash. Take the skin off. It should come right off because I smashed it, so. Take the skin off because you don't want that in there either, do you? Now you wanna just chop it very, very small because it's the same thing. You want your meatballs to be nice and soft. You don't want a big hunk of garlic, right, in your meatballs. So I'm gonna just mince that up real finely. Put that in the bowl also. Now, I wanna add some breadcrumbs in there. Now, if you see, I'm putting everything in this bowl except my meat. I'm gonna stir everything up because that means I cannot over mix the meat. So I'm gonna mix all this stuff for, first, then I'm gonna put the meat in there. Here are some Parmesan cheese, some salt. Not so heavy because the Parmesan has a lot of salt, so you don't want a lot of salt in the meatballs. Some pepper, a little Tabasco sauce for a little heat because who doesn't like heat? in the meatballs, right? Or Italian food at all. Now, get that a nice mix up. Let's add some milk. Whole milk would do the job just fine. Three eggs for the moisture. Some regular eggs, extra large was just fine. Let's give this a nice mix up. Just give it a rough mix. You don't have to, you know, mix it for hours. <laughs> Let's put the meat in there. This is 80-20 ground chuck. You can use any type of meatball you want to. Now, enough of that. It's time for your hands to go in there. I have gloves on because I don't like the meat going under my nails because this is totally disgusting to me. But guess what? Do whatever you want because it's your kitchen, right? They're all good. You want everything to be combined greatly. You know, you can even add some red chili flakes into the meatballs to give it even more spice because you have the Tabasco in there also, but you can add some more spice if you want. You can even add some garlic powder instead of the fresh garlic. But you know, you do whatever you want to do with your meatball because it's your meatball. You don't want to overmix it too bad, but you want to combine all the ingredients into the meat. 
You don't want some meatballs not having garlic and some having a big hunk of garlic. You don't want some meatballs having a lot of salt, a lot of pepper, and the other one being bland. So that's why you wanna give it a good mix. You know, meatballs are all about the mixing and the ingredients. Now I'm sure if you're Italian, you have all kinds of meatball recipes. So this is not the only meatball recipe that, you know, is in the world, but it's just my favorite meatball recipe to use. So now that looks about right. Take this meat off the gloves. Now I have this baking dish right here, but I almost forgot some garlic, some parsley, get that a quick chop. Rough chop that the meatballs a little more. Mixing. It can get a little messy in the kitchen, so watch out. I put another glove on because I want to get this meat and make little balls in it. And again, I don't want that meat under my nails. So both gloves, both hands. You want to make some nice hearty meatballs. You don't want little baby meatballs. This is a Italian dinner party, not a baby party. You're gonna bake these meatballs at 400 degrees for I say about 15 minutes or so because you want all this meat to cook. You don't want any pink in your meatballs. That's not so popular now, is it? Finish those up. You know, it's so great making these meatballs this big because your guests only need two, and it's enough for everyone to have. Nice, hearty meatballs. And they smell amazing because of that fresh garlic that I put in there. A little too much, I'll say. Let's repack those. All right, this should make about two more. And it's perfect, you know why it's perfect? Because it's feeding four people. So, enough meatballs to feed four people. And it does the job. Oops, a little less. Let's get a little of my meat off of this one right here. Pack that up real good. You wanna pack them really, really tight because you don't want your meatball to fall apart in the oven. Space those out good. And I put these in a baking sheet, which is oiled so the meatballs will not stick. I'm gonna go head these to the oven on 400 degrees for 15 minutes or until the meatballs are golden brown. I'll see you in a minute. All right, for our appetizer, we have smoked mozzarella cheesy fondue. Now I'm gonna chop this tomato because I'm gonna put this tomato on top of the fondue. I'm gonna make it into little cubes, I will say. And you know, I really, don't really like the inside of it, so I'm gonna scrape the inside of it out. But if you like it, you know, leave it in there. It's your choice. I just, I'm not a big fan of it. Pick it like that. It's gonna be a little bit messy, but you know, it's all about what you like. You eat tomatoes, right? Get my hands are white because I have tomato juice all over them. I'm chopping these tomatoes in little, little cubes because you don't want them to be too big or too small, just right. So little, you know, slices then the other way. The two, they become little tomato cubes. All right, set those aside. You're gonna use those to top your mozzarella dip at the end. All right, now it's time to start with the cheesy part. I have a mix of cheeses right here these smoked mozzarella, these slices of provolone cheese, and Parmesan to give it that little zing in your cheese dip. I wanna pour all these cheeses into a glass bowl. Mozzarella, get all your cheese out. And to finish it, some Parmesan, some salt, some pepper, some oregano, a pinch, of chili and heavy-handed of basil. Now, some sour cream. I wanna put this whole thing in here. Make sure your sour cream is not so cold 
it's kind of room temperature. You know, just throw the cheese all in there. It's gonna get a little messy, but it's okay. You wanna make sure your cheese is all folded inside of it. You know, I'm gonna to switch to a wooden spoon because I think that would do the job a little bit better because this isn't really doing the job, to be honest. So you wanna just get those provolone cheese a little chopped up a little bit. I already sliced them, but you're gonna want them more sliced up. And your goal is not to, you know, mix everything all together with all creamy. It's just to get the sour cream all over the cheese so when it bakes, everything is coated with sour cream. You know, sour cream provides that little, you know, that little peppery, that little sour taste. Not sour, but it just adds that specific taste to anything you make. Now, I have this little casserole dish, I would say and I'm gonna just coat it with olive oil because cheese does like to melt, especially in glass. A little olive oil on the sides too. And you can even use this, you know, the spray stuff for it if you don't wanna use this olive oil, but you know, olive oil is Italian and that's what I'm doing today. So let's top a pan with all this cheesy goodness. Now you may think it does not look combined at all, but when it goes in the oven, it's gonna bake and get really, really gooey. It's gonna be amazing. So you don't have to worry about the cheese not being all mixed up together. I'm gonna to bake this at 450 degrees for about 10 minutes or until the cheese is bubbly and golden brown on the sides of it. So, flat that down a little bit. See you in a minute. All right, I'm hand mixing right now some homemade whipped cream to make my cannoli dip, which is a great dessert, but it's revamped into a dip style because it's, dips are great for a party. This is about a cup of heavy cream in this bowl right here that I mixed up, but you can, you know, go the technical way and get a hand mixer for the whipped cream. I'm gonna add some ricotta cheese into my whipped cream. Great. And for the ricotta cheese and whipped cream, I'm gonna just fold that in together. You wanna go nice and slow because you don't wanna make the whipped cream flat. Nice and slow is the way to go. And I wanna add some chocolate chips into it. I wanna save the rest for the sprinkling on top to make it look extra pretty, right? It might get a little messy because the whipped cream is gonna get everywhere probably, but it's okay, just wash your hands when you're done. So you're gonna just fold that all together. It looks amazing. You know, cannolis are sold in a lot of bakeries now in 2016, and it's an Italian classic, you know, about every Italian eats. So I thought, why not revamp the Italian cannoli and make the cannoli dip? That's perfect wipe my hands off. Now, this dip is ready to serve. Make some nice piece on top of it and put some chocolate chips on top of it. Nice and all like that. And sprinkle some powdered sugar on top of it because I added no sugar yet and you're gonna want some sweetness into this dessert. But again, cannoli is not one of the sweetest desserts out there in the world. So you wanna keep it just like the classic cannoli, right? Now I have about four bowls right here, and each one of these bowls are gonna have some crushed up ice cream cones. You don't wanna crush them up too small because you want your guests to be able to dip them. So little, you know, bite-sized pieces are good. Now, while I finish crushing this up, I'll be right back, but when I come back, I wanna show you my amazing berry spritzer, and I'm gonna serve my guests. See you in a minute. Okay, our complete Italian dinner for under 30 bucks is finally done and everything is out the oven. Our main course is our spaghetti and meatballs and our meatballs are out the oven finally and they're looking delicious. I wanna put them on top of our spaghetti like so. These are eight meatballs in total. Enough to serve all your guests, and each of them will get two. 
and our homemade tomato sauce is done also. Spoon that on top of our meatballs and spaghetti. Perfect. Now it's time for our appetizer. It's out the oven, our smoked mozzarella fondue is out the oven. I'm gonna top with some chopped tomatoes that I chopped earlier and some parsley. Now, it's time for our drink. We have all the drinks made, but I wanna show you how to make this one. In the bottom, I have some unfrozen or thawed mixed berries, and I'm gonna put a little lemon-lime soda on top of it. And to top it off, I have some ice cubes. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Be sure to visit www.bigkitchen.blogspot.com for my kitchen to yours. I hope you enjoyed all the food I made today.